Okay, we're over here at our favorite uh, paint and body shop supply store over here at Ellis Color Supply right here in Dallas, Texas. And what we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about uh, Rhino Liner, Raptor Liner, Bed Truck Liner. And I see a guy just bought some Bed Truck Liner right here. Let's get a little action with him and see what he has to say about it. What kind of car you got here, buddy? Did you paint this thing? Yes, sir. This is beautiful. What color? You, this is that Harlequin paint that changes colors. Come on over here. Come on over here and look at this, Manny. Look at this beautiful paint job. Thank you. Now, I just saw you bought some Raptor liner. What's going on? What are you going to Rhino line today? I got an F-150. An F-150 truck. You're going to paint the whole truck that color? I'm trying to. The whole thing? The whole thing. Now, are you using the Tenable Raptor liner or are you using black? No, it's the black, but I add a little gray to it and mm -hmm. mix it. And, and what's, what color does it come in? The dark gray, very dark gray. It's going to be a dark charcoal gray. Yep, okay. Yep. Well, if it's anything like this beautiful Corvette you got, I'm sure it's going to be awesome, buddy. Awesome. That's you, a beautiful buddy. car. Good job, buddy. Thank you. you take care. All right, so like I said, we're down here at Ellis Color Supply, and what we're actually going to be talking about today is Raptor Liner. And, you know, we just happened to have this guy we just ran into randomly tell us that he's going to tint that Rhino liner so he can uh, change the color of it and, and make it what it needs to be. That's yeah. what he just said. So, so what? It's a tenable product. You it's can a make tenable it product. You want. And we're going to go in there and we're going to talk to our favorite guy, Costapo, and see what he has to say about it as we purchase some Raptor liner to use on our Nightmare Mercedes. Welcome to... DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. John, uh, this is a nice guy. What's wrong? You shy kid? Okay, we got John here now. Uh, John's the guy running the joint, right? Well, Pam too. Well, Pam too. Come on over here, Pam. This is Pam Ellis. This is Jim, the late Jim Ellis's wife, right here. Jim Ellis was one of my closest, closest friends. Been buying paint supplies. I don't know if you know, it's been buying paint supplies around for uh, since 1982. Did you know that? I think I've known every employee that's ever walked in these doors. <laughs> but we're here to talk about Raptor Liner today, so let's get on it and, okay? When are we going to have another raffle, bud? We need another spray gun raffle. John's the guy that sets it up for us. <laughs> Am I right or wrong? You're wrong, you're right. Okay. Really well, what's actually. the most expensive spray gun on the market? Uh, let's see. Say what's the, what's the Rolls Royce? Seda's newest one, though. 5,500. 5,500 Seda gun. Maybe we'll have a raffle for that if John hooks us up with one, of course. We might. We took okay, good calls buddy. last time. Appreciate it. Okay, where's Gestapo at? We need He's hiding back here as well. He's hiding back here. Let me start. Come on, let's go, bud. Okay, here we are. Okay, we got a Gestapo. How you doing, bro? Good. Okay, I'm sorry. This is COVID 19. We don't want to shake hands, but what the heck, right? We're in Dallas Color. Uh, we need you to show us some uh, Raptor Liner today. Okay. Are we going to be talking Raptor Liner or? Yeah, with the one we got right now. Okay, come on over here. Let's talk about it over here. Where are we at? Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> okay, come on over here. Let's talk about our Raptor Liner today. Gustavo, let's right. get it all set up for everybody so we can get a good picture right here, please. Okay, see, Gustavo's new at this. He's kind of shy and, and, and from innocent last time, yeah, from, from the last step. So you, you're kind of running the operation here, am I right? Yes, sir. You're the, you're the head honcho here. And, you got the corner office, and 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 <laughs> you're the big man on campus. So we got the Raptor liner, and everybody here knows Raptor liner is for you know they use it in trucks, but we also use it under the car 
in the fender wells now. This is basically taken taken over, let's say, 3M undercoating. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. You can say that. Yeah. Now, 3M undercoating is a product that you can buy. It's a rubberized undercoating that comes in a little small bottle. Costs about what? Thirty-two dollars a a quart. Yeah. Quart. So by the time you buy four of those. You're almost getting this right here, which is 100% more durable and stronger. And what what's going on? Talk to us. I mean, with this Raptor liner, you can pretty much, if you send it down real good with. The I'm sure, they're over here, bud. Sorry. If you, <laughs> That's okay. No problem. If you send it down with the good 36 grit sandpaper, it, it'll stick to it. You know, it pretty much goes over everything. Right. Uh, put it on your boats. Uh, uh, you can use it in construction sites oh, for bottoms. some some material. Or some uh, yeah, bobcats and stuff like that. Just anything. Just anything. Anything and everything, and it lasts. Yeah. It'll but the you. trick is, is prepping oh, your yeah, surface prep. properly. Yeah. Because we're not talking it. wet sanding it with 400. No. How you doing today, buddy? Okay. You painting some cars today, partner? We paint. Everything looking good today. Okay. Is this one of your faithful customers? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. What's the name of your shop? Come on over here, bud. <laughs> What's the name of your shop, buddy? Let's Latino. do a little advertising I for it. I got it, Pete. Latino Auto Service. Latino Auto Service, and yes. you're located in? Yeah, Denton Drive. Denton, on Denton Drive in Dallas. Dallas, yeah. And you're working seven days a week, trying to pay bills. Everything there you go, bud. Shake your hand, make a friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. Latino uh, uh, Auto Service. Latino Auto Service on Denton Drive in Dallas, Texas. If you're here, give the guy a call. You didn't give us your phone number. We can't call you. Uh, 469-364-364-2754. There you go. Give the guy a call. He needs Perfect. the business. Okay. <laughs> so back to the Raptor Liner. So we're using this on basically any metal surface. Can we use it on fiberglass? Yeah, you can. Can we use it on wood? Yes. Can we use it on plastic? Yeah, you can go over that as long as it's prepared right. It has to be prepared right. We're over here, Gestapo. You can talk to them. <laughs> okay, so, you know, he's basically telling you what's being read right here, folks. Okay. And, and from experience, too. I threw into some of those things. And okay. the, the prep, if you don't prep it right, it won't stick. Okay. Yeah, I had one of them that didn't stick at all to metal because I didn't prep it right. Right. I tried now, to a shortcut. Now, my preparation is basically 80 grit. You can take 80 grit and you just DA sand it, sand it as hard as you can, do the sanding to to the roughest sanding possible. It doesn't matter what it's going to look like because this stuff goes on so thick it's going to cover any deep scratch oh, that yeah. you might have in the surface. Now, Gestapo's telling us 36 grit. That's okay. I, we do a lot of beds and then the beds that's the recommended on the beds. Okay, so the beds do recommend 36 grit sanding to do the bed. Now do you sell this for a lot of uh, situations where let's say, well I got a purple truck and I want my bed to be purple. Oh yeah, yeah we got a tenable one too. Because that's what we're actually here for today. All this other mumbo jumbo we've been talking about, that's all here today. We're here today about the tenable Raptor liner and what people can do to make it their color that they want. Okay. What's yeah. going on? I mean, on the tenable one, pretty much, it's like a milky substance. I wish I had something I could show you, but I don't. I can't bring it okay. up. Okay. So when you're saying milky, it's kind of in between these two colors right here. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. But, it's uh, not really bright white. It's not really, uh, you know, creamy white. It's like in between, and it's kind of a clearish looking milk. It yeah. looks more like milk. Yeah. And, uh, okay. It's just on the Raptors. I know there's other product out there similar mm -hmm. to this, but on the Raptors, that's how it comes. But uh, with any cutter you want, it don't matter uh, if it's uh, even pearls. Pearls work on it too. Right. Some people, right. some people like throwing pearls on it, but any cutter you could throw it on there. The only thing about it, it might get a little lighter. That's about it. About Unless it. Unless you, uh, yeah, because now when you're mixing that uh, the Raptor with the tint or the paint, what kind of paint can we use? Can we use lacquer paint, for instance? It's recommended to use it better. It sticks better to it. To uh, what? Enamel paint. Uh, to okay, the, enamel to the or urethane. Urethane. So yes, you're sir. saying to use a urethane base, which is basically Y2K compatible. Yeah. And would it be better to use a tint, a toner, or can you just go ahead and take the paint and pour it in there with it, the the paint that you buy in the can? It's better. Um, I wouldn't recommend just throwing straight from the can base because I don't think it will stick to it. So you're saying base coat paint. It would, be, it would be better recommended, let me get this straight, to use a toner out of a mixing bank than it would getting it out of a can that you purchased from your paint store. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm backwards. Yeah, no, yeah, You what you want to do is... Okay, so you're saying don't use the toner. No, it's better, okay. to, it's better to have a mix, uh, uh, enamel mix, or the other one, the urethane enamel. Uh -huh. 
it's, it'll stick better. It'll stick better. Okay, so hair. basically, you don't use a base base color to it. Okay, what he's saying is when you go to a paint store such as Ellis Color Supply, they have a mixing bank, and what that mixing bank consists of is all the toners. Now, toners are very high solid dyes that they mix into the paint. Am I correct? But inside that paint, as they're mixing that, they also have a thing called binder. And what the binder does, it takes all those colors to make the color that you want stay together. Is that basically what we're talking about yes, here? Sir. Yes, sir. So it's better that if you want to tint your uh, Raptor liner to get the color that you want, am I right? Yeah. And then mix that in with it. Now, let's, let's put it this way. Let's say that I got a dark blue truck. Okay. Okay? And I want to paint the bed liner dark blue. All right. If I use the milky white stuff, of course I put my dark blue paint in there. It's going to be baby blue. Not exactly baby blue. It'll get lighter just a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, um, probably like twenty percent will get lighter. So in that the situation there, if you want it to really max properly, you might have to take let's say two possible colors and mix them together. Yep. Maybe put a little bit of black in there with this and that. Make it darker. Yeah. yeah. So that's where. The artistic visual uh, aspect of using your brain comes in and saying, "Now I got to get a couple different colors to make the color I need." Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, that's the only trouble we have with the Raptor Tenable. Okay, this is a little milky, and it will change your color a little bit. Just so if you're looking to do exact 100% color, you would say, "No, it's not going to work properly." You would have to go with a, maybe a darker, get a darker color of the color that you got, and then add it to it. Yes, sir. Now we just talked to a guy outside there. He's actually taking black, did he say? And taking some gray. And then it'll be a dark charcoal gray when he gets done. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of him doing that type I, of I seen I seen a, a truck, uh -huh. been a little Nissan actually, one of the customers did it. Yeah. He mixed that color up and mixed it with the Raptor liner. Uh -huh. and he shot it all over his truck, not just in the bed. Right, all right, over right. The truck. right. So what we're going to do, what we're going to do today is my friend Pete came down here. I'm going to buy some of this. Is this just the Raptor liner itself? Yeah, that's the black. Okay, okay. we want to get some black because what we're going to do, we got a car at the shop. And what I want to do is I want to get the darkest blue tone that you got and I want you to put some binder in it for me. Okay. So I can add that to my black. And then when I do those fender wells and stuff, it will still be black in there, but it'll have that dark blue accent. Do you see what I'm saying, Manny? Mm -hmm. Now, is there anything else you can tell us about using that Raptor liner um, in the aspect of toning it? Is there anything like how many coats does it take? Uh, uh, you know, do you need a special gun to spray this stuff with? This, that, and the other. You do. There's one that comes with it, uh, the Raptor liner gun. So the, the kit I buy it comes with a gun. I'm getting a gun with it. Well, we used to have a special on it. Where okay, so we get, don't get the gun no, today. You don't. Okay. Not for free. You could get it, but it's you just said you get a gun. <laughs> It just make sure that baby the body shop girl. Okay, we gotta make sure. Am I right? <laughs> we gotta make sure. Okay. You're right. You're right. But now okay. it does. A, there's a gun available. So there's a gun that's available, and now that's a special. It's like a shoots gun, you would call it. Yeah, it's with only need pressures, and it's especially especially made for that one because uh -huh. other guns won't fit on the on the which color when you uh, uh, roll it on. The, it won't uh, fit on the top of the cam. You, okay, the another, threads are different. Yeah, the threads are different, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so you got to have the specific gun. Now, let me ask you this about this gun. Is this a one-time use gun that no. we're going to be throwing in the trash, or no, no, can no, no, you no. use it continuously? Just, you can use it continuously as long as you clean it right after you use it because it will dry on you. And it's right. man, have now, how much product. is your kit going for being a four-bottle deal, I guess, a one-gallon setup? What are we looking at right here? Right now, we got it for $120. $120. That's about $60 cheaper than everybody else in Dallas, Texas. And that's everything you need? Everything except for the gun. gun. Everything's in there except for the gun. Now, so, how much is a gun? It's, uh, they're $15 for the $15. Gun. That's a pretty good buy. Yeah. That's not bad. If you go anywhere else in Dallas, Texas, it costs about $35 bucks for a gun. All right. These are the DVC toners. You really don't want to use those. This is high quality paint. It's more expensive. Um, what you want to use is the shop. Okay. Paint. What you're talking about, let's go back to DVC. You're saying DVC is high, high quality, very expensive. So if you're going to tint your paint, if you're going to tint your rhino liner, we don't really need to necessarily use the three, the, the eight, nine hundred thousand dollar gallon of paint. Only if you want to. You can still use it if you want to. If you okay. want to spend, spend the money. If you want to, but it's not necessary because all we're doing is tinting. Yeah. It's not going to change the uh, the quality, the quality of the product itself. It's not going to make it better just because you use a high quality paint. So what you're recommending, because you specialize in shop line and I'm going to tell everybody right now that if you can get this paint this is the best paint to use 
uh, very reasonably priced. Okay, oh, yeah. uh, only certain shops and uh, areas sell this because you got to be a PPG certified representative to sell it. And Shopline is a top quality, top notch paint. So you're telling me that we would go with the cheaper paint to use for tinning our primer. Yeah, it's cheaper in price, but in quality, and it's really, really good. Okay, so when it comes to the paint, the main thing when tinting your Rhino liner, or we're not using Rhino liner, Raptor, is that your paint has binder in it. Yes, it, it must have binder in it, that way it can okay. to the Raptor liner. Because if it doesn't have the binder in it, and, and it doesn't have all the contents that it really takes to hold that paint together, it'll separate. Right, so don't think you're going to go over to a big box store and, and buy a can of toner or tent and put it in there because it doesn't have the binder in it that it needs. Yeah, it needs so you're not going to save yourself. That's the most important thing. Yeah, you're not going to save yourself any money. You're going to make a big mess. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or react on you. Something will happen yeah. to you. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go down the line here. Where's the darkest blue you got, buddy? We need the darkest blue possible. Because I'm going to be using black on mine. I just want to put some blue in there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have Castapo mix us up a pint of this, and he's going to show you what the binder is. Can you do that? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so what Castapo's going to do is he's going to mix me up some paint, but the real situation is when you use your paint with your Raptor liner, it has got to have binder in the paint. If I took this right here and just said pour some in there and then I mix it in with my Raptor liner, what's going to happen is the paint will break up in particles and it'll be real blotchy and spotty. Now, since we're using black, that really doesn't matter, but we still want to do it the proper way. The way I was explaining, like I told you at first, uh, it needs to be an enamel paint or urethane so it can stick better. We okay. uh, we had that experience. We gave base coat to people, which is used in the base coat and the clear coat, and that won't work with you with that Raptor liner. Okay, so we'll hold on a minute. Let's get this straight now. So you're telling me single stage paint. Let's go ahead and say yeah. it in English. Yeah. So don't use base coat, which is a two stage paint. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna you if you're gonna mix. Uh, uh, or tint your Raptor liner, you have to use single stage paint. It would be worth either an enamel or a urethane. urethane. Yes, All right, now is this tint used in enamel paint or is this enamel paint okay. tint? No, it's used in there. You can convert. That's why we use this to convert it to. Okay, enamel. that's an enamel converter. Yes. Yes. Okay. See, I didn't know that. I didn't know there was an enamel binder that converts the toner into enamel paint. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. So. Now, we're going to go ahead and mix it. Now, how would you mix this to uh, make it enamel? Okay. Like one, would that be like uh, uh, two parts two parts to one part? Yeah. or Yeah, two parts to one part. Two yeah. parts, one, one part. Give me one pint, bud. So basically what Gustavo, he's doing it accurately, unlike like my, me and the body shop girl said, my friend Pete eyeballed it. He eyeballs everything. He just pours a little of this, pours a little of that, and I there you go. I sometimes do it like that too, but let me go ahead and measure it out. Now, do you supply uh, a lot of this for people that are using Raptor liner? Yes, yes. I recommend this every time they come in. Now, you're talking the enamel. We're not talking base coat. No. Okay, so we got three parts of paint here. Look inside there, Manny. And then what we're going to do, we're going to put the binder in there. This okay, what is this? This is what I'm expanding right now. Since we're using this type of enamel here, this is a dryer that needs to go with it. That way, whenever you shoot the paint, it dry, it, it could dry on you without it. Oh, so that dries real quick. Not not as quick as you think, but it, it helps it dry. Kind of helps it evaporate yeah. and dry and all this other stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we got our dryer. Which is enamel dryer. I've yeah, never heard of that. We, we put uh, there's 20 parts in each quart, so we're gonna put 10 parts in the pint. Okay. Let's see if I have enough over here. If not, I'll get some more in there. Well, you're short. Uh, 4.1. Yeah, 4.1 parts. 4.1 parts. Go right okay, go ahead, bud. Okay, he's short 4.1. All right, so we're actually learning something here that we didn't even know about, because usually I'll just take base coat and throw it in there. Yeah, you're probably. So using the enamel is actually really uh, paying off to do that. Yeah, so you're right probably way. very lucky that you haven't had any major catastrophes. Exactly. Now's the time that you want to hit the subscribe button. Click on that bell for notifications and comment below. Because if you don't, this big blob of Mondo is going to be inside your bed covers tonight when you crawl in there and it's going to get in places that we really don't want to talk about right now. Do my friend pay me a favor and subscribe! Now, do it, or that bondo's going to do you. Okay, so this is an especially enamel dryer that you add in there.
to um, help that out. It's, it's basically what it is. It's called a uh, accelerator. Yeah. It's an accelerator. Well, it's is that an, that an accelerator? Because we got an accelerator here. It's different. Okay. That's for another urethane paint that you, you can got use. It. You can use okay. that too. Because every now and then, if it's real humid outside, sometimes what you do is you take a cap full of accelerator and you throw it into your paint and that'll dry it real quick without it fogging up. Did you know that, sir? Uh, well. Okay, are you a painter? No, I'm a painter. You didn't know anything about accelerator? Well, we have not used that uh, paint. We uh -huh. use all the time with reducer. Reducer. So sometimes I use what... Well, sometimes when it's real humid out and your paint turns cloudy, you want to put a cap full of accelerator yeah. in it and then that'll... Yeah. Keep it, it'll dry quick and you don't have all that. Yeah, because that's the way it's made like foggy. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I, I see that when you're talking about. Yeah. Remember that, bud. You need to keep the bottle of that. Okay, so what do we got now, Gestapo? All right, well, I'm gonna, since you want it a little darker, I was going to add some black to it. Okay, go ahead and add a little bit of black. Okay, let's go over here. There, there's it working. Okay. All right, so what are we doing now here, bud? We're adding this toner to it. Now, what toner. is this? It's a deep base coat black. This is the original black. From, okay. From the shop so, line brand. It's, you know, some, some of those blacks come out brownish. Uh -huh. This is straight jet black. Okay, right? this is jet black right here. So we're going to add. Right. I don't got the scale no more, but we're going to add a That's little bit. Okay. That's okay, that's okay, bud. So what this will do, this will darken up our blue because we want it midnight blue and we're going to be using black. Yeah. So now okay. we're going to add that. Now we'll go ahead and add the binder. Yeah, the binder. That's the most important part of it, am to I right? It, yeah, to make it enamel. Okay, now this is called enamel clear. It's not called binder. This is what you use, though. That's what they call it. Okay. It is the binder for that. Okay, so enamel. It's kind of like the sealer primer thing. Yeah, got it. So we add that. We just top it off. This is how much you want to add. You don't add too much. Mm -hmm. You just want to top it off. Like right, this right, and right. Else. And there you go. Bam. And so that's ready to go. We can mix it in with our Raptor liner and we're ready to hold her down and yes, sir. hopefully it'll last for many years. Yes, sir. Even though this is going to be inside, even though this is going to be inside the fender wells, it's going to get full of mud. Guess what? It's going to be blue. <laughs> Let me shake it up for you. Okay, I appreciate that, Gustavo. I appreciate that. All right, so there you go. If you're going to put Raptor liner on your car, do it the right way. If you want to tint it, do it the proper way and do it the way our buddy Gestapo over here at Ellis Color Supply in Dallas, Texas tells you to do it. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, traveling around and going to our favorite paint store in America, Ellis Color Supply. Check them out.